Okay guys, today we're gonna talk about this BMS right here, and uh, there is quite a problem with it that uh, based on what I saw online, and sadly it's due to a lot of people getting away from this hobby of building their own batteries, and I see a genuine interest on in building batteries from the younger generation, and it makes me extremely, extremely happy to see that i am right there with you guys anytime you want to build a battery as much as i know about batteries and bms and all these systems please hit me up on the comments i'll try to respond to everything i can as much as i can because i want to see this uh, hobby live on now i bought these 4s bms's these are 30 amps but to be taken with a grain of salt 30 amps that's a cutoff realistically you're getting 15 to 20 amps continuous and it's this uh right here let me show you it's the hx 4s f30a 56 by 48 by 4 millimeters it's a pretty good one i built a battery already here and there is two ways you can uh install these one way is to use the wiring that comes with it it's this one right here i'm gonna put a diagram here on the table really quick in a second or the second method is to go straight to the board without this wiring at all as i did here which i'm uh, preparing this for a project that's why you see the thick wires that's intentional you can just go this way it's exactly these uh, shoe points here are what comes out uh, right here. I'm not sure if the camera is focusing right there. And that's just the same exact thing. Now, what do we have here? Just in case you want to take a screenshot of this one, because some of them come pre-mounted, like you see this one right here. And at this point, you don't really see what's going on inside there. I'm going to show you real quick. It's really simple to remember. Most standard BMSs, at least of this category, have this kind of reading. It starts, let's say, from top to bottom, because the only two you will see is the B minus, I'm not sure if you see it right there, and the B plus on the bottom. So let's start from the B minus, for example, that's uh, on top, that's B minus. Then you have the first one that starts with B1, then it goes to B2, B3, and B4. What these are, is this one as it says, the battery positive, uh, negative, sorry. And the B4 is the battery positive. So one, two, and three, are just these middle wires right here. When you take the B, let's say B uh, positive here, and the B negative right here, which is the orange in this case, these three are the ones that read, for example, the, uh, let's, let's say, for example, we start with this one, which is your main, this is main. B1, it starts always from the minus, going towards the plus, right? From negative to positive, that's how you'll count it on the battery too. The negative, the B1, for example, will be connected at your, let's say on this 4x4, four four, which is 4S, 4P, 4 series, 4 parallel. This one would read somewhere around 4.1 volts. B2 should technically read at around 8.2 volts. And B3 should, if everything goes right, go at 12.4 volts that 12 doesn't look really good and that's how it should go and now these two for example in this 4x4 configuration you should realistically get around 16 volts and to get that 16 volts it's this one right here with this one right here that's your total 16 volts that's your b plus and b minus so I hope you remember this one always. If you don't find diagrams online, because sometimes it's not super easy, and you go get stuck, you know where to connect, for example, let's say B, mi B minus, which is your the minus of your battery, and the B plus of your battery. But what about the B1, B2, and B3? That's very easy. Here's the battery bank that I built, for example. And just as a number of reference in here, let's say I started right here. As you see, there's one bank here, goes up here, and it merges with the second bank, then it goes in, connects to the second bank, goes out, connects to the other bank, and you, you form this uh, diagram. Let me put it 
in a simple way right here. For example, this would be your uh, first bank, which is this one that you see right here, That what's happening here. And this one is comprised of four batteries, two, three, four batteries. Then it goes up and it connects with the second row. Not in this way, because it starts negative here, right? Then positive, then positive connects to the negative of this one and so on and goes to the second one so it starts here negative you have positive right here then it goes and connects with the negative of the second bank right like this two three four cells then of course obviously it ends up positive here to close the circuit and goes up again right here and goes to this way we have four more cells at least i'm making it for this configuration right because here you go from uh, negative to positive then connect to the other negative then you have the other positive right here as you see and then from here you go here and that's your end which is another negative right here and you end up with a positive right here this i know it sounds like it's super complicated no that it's actually not complicated at all because what we're doing right here we have these four batteries all these four together in parallel are creating the same voltage as the first battery four volts as you see right here we only have four volts here another four volts here four volts here four volts here but now we connected them in series and uh, you see minus plus to the other minus and the other plus then all of them together get the 16 volts of the battery so keep in mind one thing while building these batteries when you connect them in parallel like this one right here you are not increasing the voltage in parallel in parallel only the uh capacity increases or the power or whatever you want to call the amperage amps increase let's say they have all two amps each so now four batteries you have eight amps in total as you see for example right here now we have eight amps eight amps eight amps eight amps 8 by 4 we should technically have 32 amps max this is max you will not be able to draw 32 amps continuous from these batteries otherwise you will overheat them and blow them but this is their max capacity especially at least for these ones here there's other batteries that go higher or lower and this bms is 30 amps maximum too so you cannot go over there realistically out of 32 amps you would use maybe 15 to 23 amps in total that would be what i suggest now how do these uh what you would call b1 2 and 3 come in that's the easy part right here the start of your battery is right here as you saw i have the start of my battery right here this is gonna be our b minus it starts with a minus on the bottom of this battery as you see and that's our b uh, just b minus or b po uh, negative boom b negative and then we mark the other side because we went in out in out again we have the b positive so we have the two these two b's right here now in this case start counting for example from the negative side, as I said, from the negative, you start B1, B2, and B3 when they're not marked with the voltages, like in some other BMSs, you have the voltages. Now you would start with the B1 from the B uh, negative here. You go on the middle of these two batteries. That's where your B1 would be it's very easy you see that then you follow this going from here then it would be your b2 right here then you go from here on the middle of the other batteries it would be your b3 as you see now you completed the whole circuit b negative b1 b2 b3 and b positive and in this circuit for example you have nothing to do with the b minus and p plus those are for power b minus and p plus are not part 
of this di uh, connection here. These are to connect only for the balance, the BMS or battery management system itself, the P minus and P plus or power minus and power plus are for uh, charge and discharge. That's all these two can do. They don't do any regulation or any of that. So now there's one more problem before I take more of your time and probably I took too much of your time. Let me show you something that a lot of you have been going through lately and it's frustrating. It's uh, the voltage on this uh, battery management system, for example, not reading properly. As you see, let me put these numbers here so you guys can see them. This battery here. I hope you can see the numbers there. Now, if I measure the uh, battery itself, which is B minus and B plus directly from the battery, look at the numbers. We have sharp 59, almost 16 volts. Okay, so, but when I measure here where it matters, P minus and P plus, which is going to be our output, which we're going to power on inverters or whatever and charge the battery through P minus and plus. What happens here? Let me measure it from here. As you see here, it goes to 9, 10, 9, 12. So what happened from almost 16 to less than 10? How is that possible? Well, there is a big problem with some of these BMSs that is really easy to correct if you're careful enough with a piece of wire. Let's say just this one. I stripped just a regular, doesn't need to be this thick. I just happen to have this handy. Now, this needs to get triggered to wake up. It's almost like you're telling the BMS, wake up, the sun's shining, the rooster's singing, right? <laughs> So what do you need to short here? Well, I'm using the word short, but in this case would be almost as if, if it had a button, one of those click it return buttons. That's not really on and off. It's just a contact spring. That is one of those switches that goes back in, but comes back out right away. Just makes a quick contact. Well, that's what we need to do right here. In order to wake this one up, we need to do the power uh, negative and the battery negative to con connect with each other. Just just a quick touch. It would be in your BMS. It's right here, B minus and P minus. This one right here and this one right here. You simply do a quick touch between them. Don't hold it too long. Just a quick touch, make sure it touches. And that's a signal to wake up the MOSFETs and to switch it back on. So let me do just that and we'll take a quick reading. This is B minus. And this is our P minus. Let me make sure it's actually contacting right here and right here. Boom. This should do it. Now let's measure it on the P minus and P plus really quick. It was nine volts, less than 10 volts a minute ago. Let's see what it is. What is it now? Would you look at that? 15.5 now on the P minus and P plus. So now this BMS is awake. Is turned on. Let me go from the main terminals. Main terminals 59, P minus and P plus 15.5, which is normal. Eh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 is sometimes a drop on wiring, drop on uh, the MOSFETs themselves, and all the uh, pieces inside they need to take their own power, so it's normal. Now, one thing before I leave from this video, I know it looks too messy here. You can Feel free to take a screenshot if you need to, just so you remember. And trust me, once you, you build your very first battery, you will never, <laughs> you will never go back to buying another one. You will build a million of them because it's so easy when you understand that initial idea how batteries are built and how they're connected to a BMS. Now, one thing what a BMS does not do is balance your batteries initially. These batteries must be balanced by you first. So what I did here, for example, these 16 batteries have a fluctuation in voltage of maximum. I made sure it's maximum 0 0.1 to 0 0.3. What that means is that between these batteries, the voltage is not going to be more than 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 plus or minus in difference. I made sure to charge them one by one when it was needed until they had that voltage right on point. 
Now, these batteries have a working voltage most of the 18650s. If I have, I feel like my math teacher right now, but it's okay. I salute her if she's watching. These 18650s, that's what these uh, here are. Mine are the two amps, or you will hear 2000 milliamp and all. I like just to go straight two amp. Now these and all other 18650s have a upper voltage of maximum that you don't want to top it off over that 4.2 which this is the max that it doesn't go higher the nominal voltage on these is 3.7 or to be exactly correct is 3.65 now this is the perfect voltage this one here is questionable voltage if you reach that try to drain it slowly with something don't put anything motorized on them when they're that high to shock them put something slow charge another battery or something to drop it to 365 or 375 those are the numbers you're looking for and do not let them go under i know a lot of people will say well 2.5 volts they can go 2.50 right well 2.50 or two and a half volts is that questionable mark that will it even come back again some batteries will not come back if they're the cheapo version make sure these batteries never go under three volts three volts is gonna be the bottom line you ever want to let these batteries go to under three volts you're in real questionable territories because if 365 or 370 is 100% charge, 3 volts is actually 10% charge in 90% of these batteries. So now just think of yourself what 250 is. You're going at zero or under. So with that said, I hope you learned something. I hope this was not the uh, most or the worst Thing you've ever seen in your life let me write it down what you need to trigger the bms to turn back on if this happens to you that different voltage you just need to jump really quick between p minus and b minus as you see right here that's all you need to jump start to wake up the bms at least in this version of the bms links will be in the description for everything that i'm using here including if i don't find the exact things I'll try to replace them with something that's 99% close to it. And if you guys want me to build one of these batteries on camera, I'll gladly do so. All this was with, uh, done with this nickel strip from Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. And the spot welding, believe it or not, was done with this uh, CSI spot welder. This guy here, I know I've heard people say this and that. Believe me, I don't get easily happy about things but this guy right here has built me so many batteries and still goes extremely strong link will be in the description for it as well and yes the link will be in the description for this 4s bms and i'll try to leave a 3s bms the reason being for the 3s is that you can build sharp 12 volt batteries with a 3s now there's a way to build 12 volts with 4s as well but if you can buy a 3s I suggest you go ahead and get a 3S out of the gate so you don't have to question anything later. With that said, I hope this video was not too boring. You can always rewind it back and check what I wrote here on the table. Let me take these things out. And uh, yeah, that was pretty much all I could uh, tell you. Let me put this here, BMS start okay that's how you start the bms if you are stuck in that loop that your battery has either 12 or 16 volts but the bms has almost half of that or at least way less than that you just started with p minus and p and b minus and we are good to go i hope you learned something on this video i truly thank you for your valuable time and i'll never take it for granted i hope you learned something let me know in the comments if i can be of any other kind of help regarding batteries or anything else that you think i might have knowledge of please like and subscribe and we will see you next time bye